Hi there, welcome to the channel and welcome to Airbrushing for the Beginner episode one. Now this is for the absolute beginner that hasn't ever picked up an airbrush before. I'm going to do these episodes, we're on episode one, I'm going to take you through a series of airbrush for beginner episodes. This is probably going to go up to about episode 15. So get comfort for this episode guys. I'm going to talk you through the basics, the absolute basics when you're buying your airbrush and you are hooking it up for the first time. We're going to do a little bit on paint mixing. Paper, little bits that you need to get you started and get you chucking some paint at some paper on a panel. So Hopefully you've brought your first airbrush and you've got your compressor. Now you're itching to get started. And usually what the first thing people do is they chuck the airline on, they chuck a load of paint in it, blast it through, the paint, the airbrush gets clogged up, they get stuck, they go onto the Facebook forums, they ask some questions on a airbrush forum and they get absolutely bombarded with comments saying, oh, you're going to need new seals in your brush and have you tried this and you're going to need that, your needle's bent and, and then you get absolutely swamped with all these comments. So stick around, I will show you what to do in these episodes. Nice and simple, I'll say it as it is, not hiding anything from you, we'll do it as cheaply as possible possible so you've not got to break the bank and go out and buy all these expensive gadgets and things to airbrush with you don't need that guys and you don't need to be looking at videos that say do this buy that you need three tips of this and this is how you airbrush i've just looked at a load on youtube and i think half the time these people are giving you false information and they're just making videos for the, for the sake of it i actually want to teach you something guys in these videos so stick around Let's get into it. So you've got your airbrush. Hopefully you've got a semi-decent one. That's the first off, guys. Buy yourself a half-decent brush. Because if you're getting into this long haul, you want a brush that's going to sit beside you and work every time you pick it up. There's nothing worse than buying a cheap, crap brush that will last you probably three or four goes and it will just be a waste of money and you'll be buying them and buying them. So semi-decent brush we've got on here. This is the Iwata. Revolution and it is a 0.5 mil needle and nozzle setup. It's a basic brush, but it is, is a very good brush by a very good manufacturer. And they work and they last. They're good workhorses. And this thing, if you've got one of these, will be with you in your career. You probably end up getting buried with it because it will last the time you're on the planet. I guarantee it. So that's the brush we've got today. This is a double action airbrush. Now, hopefully you, you've come onto this episode and you know a little bit about airbrushes. If you don't, I'll just give you a little run through. Now, you can get a double action, which this one is, and you can get a single action airbrush. Now, if people say to you, oh, you need a single action airbrush, just think of an aerosol can when you spray an aerosol can. That is basically a single action airbrush. It's like an aerosol can, you press down and the paint is instantly there and your movement in your finger is just down and the paint and the mixture and the air is coming straight out. That's what a single action airbrush does. Press down and it instantly pushes the air and the paint out and that's the, that's the finish you get like an aerosol can. The one that I'd prefer you to get for these episodes and learn with is a double action airbrush where you press down and then you move the trigger back. So when you move the trigger back, that's when the paint and air are mixed and it comes out the front of the brush. So down for air, back for paint. That's a double action airbrush. This is a good beginner's one because it's a 0 0.5, so it will cope with your slightly thicker paints a lot easier. And you can still get some good detail down with this brush as well you'll get good coverage with it as well you'll see that a little bit later on in the episodes coming up so i'm going to continue with this brush throughout these episodes and we'll get some portraits down with this as well in the end in the episodes to come i will use this brush with you guys 
all the way through these beginner guides. I won't pick up a custom micron or something fancy. It will be this basic brush throughout. So I'll be with you guys learning and teaching you with the basics. So we've got the brush. The next thing that you're gonna to need to get is an airline. So you can get the braided airlines, they're nice and cheap. You can get, this one's an Iwata one. This is about six or seven feet long. On one end of the airline, you get like a BS fitment, like a quarter inch BS fitment. That usually fits to your compressor and screws straight in. And then the opposite end, I'll just turn that air off, you get the thread, which is this one here. So it looks like that. They look like a bike pump, the old fashioned bike pumps where you'd screw that onto your bike valve to pump your tire up. Similar sort of size. So you get that fitment there. So when you've got your brush, your brushes usually turn up and they're like that so you can see the thread, like that. With these, you can screw these straight to the bottom. You can work like that, it's not an issue, you can work like that. But when it comes to cleaning and things, you've permanently got your airline attached and it's just a little bit awkward. So what I advise you, you get I'll leave links to a site where you can pick all your airbrush bits up. Really good site, they do some really good pieces there and they're reasonably priced guys and they've got good customer help. So if you need help with anything, you can get hold of these guys and they know what they're on about. They've been established for a long time and they'll give you advice. So the next thing you need is an attachment to go from your brush to your airline. Now you can get these, which are little connectors. These will be on the side guys, so you can pick these up, they're not expensive. And you screw that to the bottom of your brush. Just nip that up tight, so now your brush is looking like that, with that little pin at the bottom. The next thing you need to get, which are nice and cheap again, is a, I call these quick connections, like that. One side you've got a thread and the other side you've got a little hole and the actual body of this moves up and down on the spring. So the threaded side you screw to your airline, just nip that up and now that part of your brush can clip into there and it makes life a lot easier because you can be painting if you want to clean your brush, just unclip. You're not going to lose any air because that seals and stops the air coming out. And you're good to go. You can clean your brush and do all your things nice and easy. Put that on your rack or in your holder. You're not permanently connected up to your airline. So them two pieces I would advise. So you're good to go. That's your brush, links up. Nice and easy, straightforward, good to go. We've got some air. So there you go, you're good to go. Now, air pressures, working air pressures for a beginner. You don't wanna to go too low on your PSI, so you just sort of hear it really lightly coming out. You want that type of air pressure where you can hear it, you can feel it on your hand. A good working pressure to work from as a beginner is 25 to 30 PSI is a good working pressure. You'll only need to start dialing your pressures when you're starting to go down on detailed pieces. You can start to knock your pressures back, but we'll cover them later on in the episode. So a good standard working pressure to get practicing with, 25 to 30, will get you going in a brush like this or a brush of your choice. Absolutely fine. So you've got your air pressure going. You've got your compressor running, that's working. You've got air coming out your brush. The next thing that I advise you to do, do not chuck paint straight in the brush just yet. Don't go anywhere near that paint just yet. Take your cap off, get some water, tap water or distilled water. I usually use distilled water, it's not expensive. It's just a cleaner water I think than using tap water because tap water's got all sorts of different things in it. So I always use distilled. Drop some water in your brush 
and just think in your mind that that's painting. Now, the first thing I want you to do, if you've never picked an airbrush up before, you know with your double action airbrush now that you've got to go down for air. Now, when you start to move your trigger back, hopefully this will pick this up so you can see. You bring your trigger back and hopefully you can see that. That's your water coming out. So that is full back. That's how much paint you would be getting out of your brush if you had painting it right at this minute. So just drop some water in your brush, get a piece of cardboard like what I've just done there and have a look and start moving the trigger back and you'll see how much water comes out when you move your trigger. Tiny bit back, you'll see a little bit of mist. Move all the way back, you get loads coming out. And just sit there and practice that for a few minutes, blowing water through, get a feel for it, have a look, see where it's coming out with water. It's cheap, you can use tap water, it's nice and cheap. You're not putting any paint in it yet and you're not buying expensive airbrush paint and going, oh yeah, and just wasting all that. You're just spewing money out the end of the brush when you don't need to. Practice with a little bit of water, get to grips and have a look at how much comes out when you move your trigger with water. Then you can start moving on to paint. Now, when it comes to paint, you've got the actual airbrush paints that you can get. As a beginner, I wouldn't advise buying any airbrush paints at the start because airbrush paints are expensive. All paint nowadays is gone right up when it comes to solvent paints, the paint industry, the prices are going through the roof, guys. Especially if you're doing clear coating, base coating, things like that, all solvent stuff, all paints have gone up. So you wanna be doing this as cheaply as possible as a beginner. So I would recommend buying yourself some artist acrylic like this. I'll leave a link to this one. This one's Hobbycraft. This is probably about £1.20 and this is thick artist acrylic. You can use this. You don't put this straight into the airbrush. It wouldn't, it wouldn't go through. So a nice, simple, easy way to mix some paint. Drop a couple of drops and you can see how thick that is. That's the paint in the pot and that's not budging guys, it's not coming out. So you can't spray that. So we've got a blob of paint like that in that cup. Grab yourself some water because this is water-based acrylic. Drop some water in and we're going for you're going for about the, the same amount of paint, drop sort of the same amount of water in with your thick artist acrylic. Mix it round, nice and simple. Give it a good mix. I mean, I'm using a cotton bud for this. You can use a little wooden stirrers, they're absolutely fine. So you're aiming for the consistency. As a beginner, I would say for full fat milk, People say mix the consistency to semi-skimmed. We'll be mixing to semi-skimmed, but that'll be later on in the episodes. And I'll show you what you do when you're mixing thinner paints and why you need to mix thin paints. But that'll be more on air pressures and things like that later on. So you've mixed a little bit of paint, nice and simple. Consistency seems quite nice. Let's drop that to the side. Now, Drop a little bit of paint in your brush and you'll see this just drip and pour in. So that is quite thin, you can see that dripping in there. So that's like the consistency of milk, semi-skimmed milk. Get your brush again, back off, and that is spraying. That's coming out nice. Not a problem at all with this brush, spraying at that air pressure that we're working on, 25 to 30, absolutely fine with that consistency of your spray. So you've got a bit of paint in your brush. Now it comes to, you're thinking to yourself, oh, what shall I paint on? You go down to like one of the hobby shops and then you walk in 
or you go on eBay and Amazon and you're absolutely bombarded with different papers, canvases, different textures, scrapbook pads, and they can range from a couple of quid up to 30, 40, 50 pound packs of paper. Now, when you're, as a, when you're a beginner, you don't need to be looking at synthetic papers, fancy canvases and all that. Leave all that stuff for later on. You do not need it now. Wait till you've progressed about a year, two years down the line when you're painting really nice pieces. That's when you need to start putting them really nice pieces of artwork onto quality paper, guys. Because that's when you'll be selling your pieces to people or you're doing pieces for your family. So get yourself cheap paper. I say this every time. I use cheap paper. I'll use this mainly for masking up and practicing on. I'll probably have a piece of this stripped off at the side of a piece of quality paper. And I'll use this cheap stuff. I have a quality piece of paper there, a torn off piece of that, and I can just use it for blasting through, getting my colours while I'm painting on a quality piece. But when you're a beginner, this sort of stuff is absolutely fine to practice on. This actual roll is about two pound, and it's about 50 meters. So you can just tear a piece off and practice for your heart's content on a piece of cheap paper. And that's what it's about. I'd recommend this stuff, if you can't get hold of this, buy yourself some wallpaper backing paper. 600 meter, 600 mil wide roll, about 30 meters for about three pound, and you can blast away with your cheap paint. Now, when it comes to getting set up for something to paint on, grab yourself an easel. You can buy a second hand easel on the marketplaces, anything from five pound upwards this one was brought brand new this was from the works or hobby craft these come out about 15 pound now i brought this many many years ago so that's the one that i've got now i usually put a board on here and then stick paper to it now you're not going to buy a fancy board an artist whiteboard you do not need anything like that get yourself a scrap piece of ply MDF, anything you've got laying around that's flat to the size of the easel, stick it on your easel like that, masking tape, inch masking tape, nice and cheap, cut a piece of paper, drop it on the board and you are good to go. You can practice with your brush on your cheap paper, you can throw it away, you've got cheap paint, it's not costing you a lot of money. If you were to put expensive airbrush paint in, these come out at about seven pound a bottle. I guarantee it you could use that bottle when you're a beginner in about two hours practicing and you've wasted seven pound. When you can buy one of these for about one pound 20, this will make probably about 16 bottles like that out of one of these so it's win-win guys it's nice and cheap you don't need to throw loads of money at this when you're a beginner so that's my little basic guide this is the first episode on airbrushing for a beginner episode one a little bit about paint getting set up cheap things to get water airbrush cleaner as i say i'll leave links in the description i've got some airbrush cleaner here which is a sort of a mild one for cleaning your brush through i've got actual 2k thinners if i get stuck paint i can use that but mainly water if you're using airbrush acrylics use water to clean your brush through first now i'll give you a little quick guide on cleaning your brush so you've done a bit of painting. We've got black paint still. We've got a little bit of paint in there. You've got some in your cup still. Pour your paint into your plastic cup. Now, then you're thinking, oh, well, I've got all this paint. What can I do? You can buy these little cheap plastic bottles and you can decant your leftover paint into your bottle. 
use a bit of masking tape, put a piece around the front like I've done on that that says thinners or water, and then save your paint. So you pulled that out. First thing you need to do, grab some water, blast through like that. So that'll just get rid of any leftover paint. Quick blast through like that. You can get a cotton bud and just agitate, blast through as you're doing, like that. Kitchen roll, nice and cheap, highly recommended guys. You'll go through loads of it airbrushing, roll a bit up, pinch, wipe the cup out, and that's clean. Another little check, little bit more water, blast through, Brush is running nice and clean. Stick your lid back on and that's your brush clean. I'll move on in the next episodes as we do a bit more painting. I'll show you and start running you through some more in depth on cleaning when you start getting problems. But I'm gonna leave that one today on this episode. So basic airbrush setup for a beginner. Hope you can join me in the next episode when we move on. And I'm just going to teach you as much as I can, the easiest way. Drop your comments. Tell me what you're thinking, guys. And I hope to see you in the next one. Don't forget, if you're new to this channel, click that subscribe, press that notification. Drop us a thumbs up if you're liking the content. And I will see you in episode two of the Airbrushing for the Beginner. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.